Hello, family. Hello, hello, hello. How y'all doing? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hold on. Let's see what this. Is. Okay, I got it right. I was trying to mess with that light. How y'all doing? Happy Friday, Friday. However, however you want to say it. Hopefully, you had a blessed week and a blessed day. Welcome again to Faith Based Workplace. I'm your host Solomon Savoy. Uh, tonight we're gonna be talking about gaslighting and a narcissistic relationship. You know how to kind of gaslighting, so I have a few things to discuss. Uh, shouldn't be too long. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna start doing like my wife. Let me. Let me not say that. Uh, let me see who's all in here. Let me see. I know I seen my brother Rizzo in here. Hey, how you doing, uh, sis? Uh, Pink girl teaches. Coach Natisha in here. How you doing? Spanish girl. Hey, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Auntie Karen's in here. Welcome. My wife Northry Living definitely in here. Let me see what Rizzo said. Hold on, let me see. I got it right here. Let's see. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I see it. I see it now. Hey, how you doing, uh, Butu? Welcome, welcome. Let me see anybody else. I don't want to miss anybody. Leaps of Faith, hey, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. MB Joe, hey, welcome, welcome. I think I got, oh, wait, uh, Ace, how you doing? Welcome as well. Please hit the like button, you know, if you uh coming as you come in, you know, hit the like button. That's how the, you know, the video that, you know, it's hard to explain the algorithm, but that's how it works on any social media, especially this one, by hitting the like bu button and sharing things out and things like that. So please hit the like button as you come in. I appreciate it. Uh, if you ain't subscribed to the channel, also subscribe to the channel as well. So, yes, we're about to get into this one. Like I said, gaslighting. Uh, I noticed, you know. Uh, I know Telshare talked about it a little bit last night. Uh, and she told me, I didn't even realize you was talking about that. I was, I was like, I, hey, God up to something, you know, for us to be talking about it. And I know uh, Joy had mentioned it too as well, was talking about some of the things with gaslighting and stuff like that. So, hey, we all talking about it for a reason. So just sit back and we'll figure out what's going on with this. But again, thank y'all, man. It's, it's so happy to be here and just uh, another day, another Friday. Uh, I kind of, well, I ain't gonna say I was sleepy, but you know, I was sitting in the chairs watching TV. Sean, I was like, you up for your life? I was like, yeah, I'm up. And I went in there, you know, fixed my hair right quick and shaved and can't run over here. So we good to go. <laughs> we are good to go. <laughs> yes. So let me, uh, hold on. Okay, so this is Shannon, uh, all the information, how to get in touch with Shannon so far as, you know, her Instagram, Twitter, you know, Facebook, her website, where you can get all the pretty shirts from. And, you know, she got shirts and and, and posts and all kinds of stuff over there. So if you want to go reach my wife, you can go there. Hey, how you doing? Tell her, welcome, welcome. Uh, Camille, welcome. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all for joining. So good when family just come. You know, it's like, it's like, well, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but it's almost like Thanksgiving. You know, you finally come around and you're ready to eat. And then, you know, everybody's sitting down like, okay, what a turkey is. So I guess I'm a turkey today, but, you know, <laughs> y'all not eating me. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we're going to sit here and enjoy this and hopefully get some laughs. And, and, uh, what you say? <laughs> say you're on a tight ship over here. I see what you're saying, Shannon. <laughs> and then this all my stuff, how to get in touch with me, you know, so far as Facebook, Instagram. I'm not on Facebook as much. I do post on there on my, uh, on my uh, faith-based workplace thing, but you know, you really want to follow me. I say Instagram and then TikTok. I've been, you know, posting videos on TikTok and commenting a lot. So if you ain't follow me yet, go follow me over there. But man, again, welcome. Thank y'all all for being here. It's always good to be around family. It's always good to actually talk about uh, these narcissists and and explore different things that they do and. 
things like that. So, hey, you know, it's one of them things you're like, you know what? It ain't enough talking about these people. It, it don't matter how much I talk, Shannon talk, Cluster Be Free talk, uh, Telsha talk, or Joy talk, or anybody else talk. It still ain't enough being said about these people because obviously people are still going through hurt. People are still being, being gaslit and, and lied to. So obviously the word and the message is not being spread enough yet. I know y'all thinking like, well, we, we, I have, you know, followers and stuff. It's still not enough, fam. You look at what I'm saying, it's still not enough because if more of the world knew, we wouldn't be having the same issues that we having over and over. So we got to keep talking. We got to keep doing this thing, keep coming together, spreading the word. I thought, mom thing was right. All right. We got to keep spreading, you know, the word and just, you know, hey, how you doing? Love, peace, welcome. We got to keep just doing this thing because it's not it's not just about us. It's always somebody, you know, else that we got to reach back and help them out, especially when it comes to narcissist abuse or anything on this level. So that's that's why every time I get opportunity to talk about it, you know, whether it's on, on, on a clubhouse or here or posting on social media, I even post it on LinkedIn. I mean, I know LinkedIn is not the Spot four, but hey, who said God can't be on LinkedIn? You know what I'm saying? So I post about God and talk about narcissism on that platform as well because it's faith-based workplace. It's in the workplace. So yes, we do it all over, all over the place. Let me see what y'all saying before we get started. Let me see what Shannon and let me see what Shannon just said. She said, I had a TV on for uh for my man was on. I was I was every single one of these shows involves uh involves narcissists and they have no idea yeah we were, Sharon I was talking about that last night all these drama shows you know like uh for my man feared our neighbor and things like that a lot of these people when you look at the the neighbor or or the man or the woman involved and you look at it and you got your discernment is on I guarantee you can point out which person is the narcissist I, I guarantee you can figure out like man this person this neighbor is a narcissist and not only is it the man it's the woman, you know, it's that Jezebel Ahab spirit. Because when you look at it, the woman out there pushing the husband to go out there and go start and mess with the person next door. So it's one big thing. And somebody end up, you know, getting hurt or going to jail or something like that. So, yes. Yes. So just realize that, yeah, it's, it's all over the place. Let me see. Uh, love, peace. Say hi, everyone. Hey, how you doing? I just love how everybody speak to everybody. Uh, Rizzo speaking to Telsha. Yes. Yes. Uh, Camille just said hi to Shannon. Boots. Okay, she's speaking. To okay, so it's always good, like I say, for everybody just to speak. That's how you know when you're, in, you're, you're amongst family and good friend. How you doing, Jasmine? Jasmine in here. <laughs> Coming in here already with, with uh, verses. What she say? She say, stop, drop, shut them down, open up shop. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, no. Let me, let me stop. I ain't no singer. I can rap a little bit, I guess. But yeah, that's how Rough Riders roll. Dear, make sure y'all ready to cut a Rough Riders. Hey, that's Shannon going to be on that back row. We already called it out before we even started. Shannon going to be on that back row. Uh, Joy going to be on that back row. Uh, let me see. Telsha definitely is going to be on that back row. Auntie Karen's going to be on that back row. Uh, if Alan B coming here, he's definitely on that back row. And Kingdom Minded Advances, y'all got to watch her. She's on that back row, which I as well. And Jasmine gets it crunk. So, yeah, they got a lot of people on that back row. I'm not on there. I'm, I'm, I'm the host, so I'm not going to be on the back row. But I know the people I just named <laughs> definitely going to be on that back row. There was, there was an intense thing last night messing around. I, I mean, I did a, I did a couple. I did put some dogs up there, but that's because everybody else was doing it. So I figured, you know, I might as well join in it too. Let, let my sister know I'm listening too. I hear talking about the crest, uh, the Chinese crest. So I want to go ahead and put it up there. But yeah, I'm, I'm being good tonight. You know, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this message and, the people I name probably go cut up and be on that back row. Y'all go see. For y'all just watching a lot, if y'all y'all watch this replay, you you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's it's a lot of them in here. Shannon is one of them. She don't let that pretty smile and that, that face fool you. She cuts up just like everybody else. So yeah, she does. <laughs> let me see. Uh, Emmy Joe said that and Jezebel watches Life Lifetime TV and Investigation Discovery, yet does the same forms of abuses towards me. Wow. See, that's that. See, they, yeah. It's like watching themselves in the mirror, I guess, you know, MB to be honest, which is like watching themselves. And they probably learn a, a thing or two how to do things worse to you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I want to say these people are literally everywhere, underestimating their numbers. What have you thinking is only a few of them? Nope. And that's what I used to think. I used to think it was all, you know, it can't be, can't be that many. You know, you know, you had, you know, a couple of instances where does that work on your family? You're like, it can't be that. Many. Ooh, they, 
they all over the place. And the quicker you realize that, the better off you are. They all over the place. Let me tell you. Uh, Auntie Karen say, part of the reason I canceled cable because I refuse to watch all those narcissists out of 33 years. I need a break. Yeah, it's time to just let go and let God and, and go out and, and, and play dominoes or, 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 or scrabble or do some puzzle or crossword puzzles or something. Go out and walk, exercise. Yeah, just give them a break. They all over the place. Yes. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see what else in here before we get started. Really, see, see what Joy said. Yeah, see, she said, "No, I'm relocating to the front today. I'm taking notes in Innocent." <laughs> okay, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. See, I named Joy on the back row, but we're gonna see if she gonna be on the front row today. We're gonna see. <laughs> so y'all be the judge of that later on and see. Let's see if Joy end up on the front. See, tell she already. See, she already in here laughing. So she already on the back row already. See, see, that's one. So I got one already, and I know Shannon gonna be back there. Just give her a little time. She'll be back there just shortly. <laughs> Trust me. Let's see. What else we got in here before we get started? Let's see. Let's see. What tell you say? Beth started. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Beth Riley did start it last night. She did. She did. And that's another one. I forgot about her. That's another one. She come in. She'll be on right on that back row with all of y'all. So, yeah. You're right. She did start it. You're right. You right. <laughs> they say, see, Jordan said they're pulling you to that back row. You see, they already, see, they said they're going to pull you to that back row. That's messed up. My sis trying to be good and be on the front row, and y'all going to pull it to the back. See? You see? So I'm trying to help you out, Joe. I'm trying to get you up here with me. I'm going to be on the front row. Well, I'm going to try to be on the front row for the most part of this, this live. We're going to see. I might end up on the back row myself. We're going to see. <laughs> see? Shannon agree with you. Tell she say best, Beth sets it off. She definitely does. Every time she come in, she starts setting it off. I'm like, oh, okay. I said, okay. So, Say Beth for real one. I like it. <laughs> all right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get this started because I know y'all gonna keep laughing all throughout, which is always a good thing. Like I said, that's part of the thing we do over here. We talk about serious issues, but at the same time, we try to laugh, laugh when we can. Sometimes, you know, we can't, and I get it. Sometimes the subject is just real serious, so you know, you can't, you know, really do it. But you know, we try. You know, we try. We try. We try. So back again. Like I said, gaslighting and narcissistic relationships, how to counter gaslighting. So let's get into this. And I always like to break down so we're all on the same page. Just in case, you know, some people don't know what some of these terms mean. So I always want to go back to, like you say, kindergarten and just let's just go over the terms so we're all on the same page and realize what we're actually talking about. So gaslighting, and I got this from, uh, there's not a dictionary on, online. Uh, I forgot the name of the dictionary, but you can Google it. This is any dictionary to say the same thing. Uh, gaslight is a form of manipulation that occurs in uh, abusive relationships. Well, in abusive relationships. Uh, it's an uh, insidious and sometimes covert, covert, yeah, yeah, I hit it, right? Covert type of emotional abuse where the bully, and it's funny how this, this definition, if you look at the, some of the words, how it's saying insidious, we all know narcissists are evil. They insidious. Uh, I said covert. We know about the covert narcissists, which we, we relate that to the female, but they have some male covert narcissists as well. Uh, and then they, they broke down with emotional abuse. And then they say we're the bully. So they call them the person that's doing this a bully. So when you think about that, it's like the person that's gaslighting, gaslighting you is really a bully. And it's probably something that happened to them in childhood or something like that. And they just projecting. So let me finish reading. They say uh, where, the, where the bully makes the target question everything. So they use this form of bullying to have you questioning things that you know to be true. So you sitting here knowing it's like, well, simple. Like we didn't say this before. It's like knowing like this paint color on this wall is cream, but you walking in and say, nah, that's black. And I'm like, nah, it's cream. But after so many times you telling me it's black, I started debating like, wait, did they, is, it, is this the new black? I mean, what? What is it? I thought it was cream. Maybe they got a new color. So to me, that's what and I don't think we rep, well, I don't think we we really relate bullying and gaslighting together. But when you think about it, narcissists are bullies and they love to gaslight and it's all a form of manipulation. And that bully, like like it says in the in the message, makes the target question everything. So when you're in court and they have you arguing with them, questioning things, because, you know, they, they remember certain things, or they're going to write down certain things as well. That's why we tell y'all to document, especially when you're going through a narcissist abuse, uh, you know, divorce or child uh, custody, anything like that. These people will have you questioning things that happened in the past that you know to be true, and you're sitting there wondering, and you, you know, you're in court, because I know, because I did that. I'm like, wait, hold on. Did, 
But I had to snap out of it. Like, nah, nah, that, nah, I know what happened. I was there. And matter of fact, I, I got it written down right here. But if you don't have this stuff written down and it can play on your on, on, your, on your psyche, then you're sitting there like in court or whatever situation. You're like, wait, I don't know. I don't know really what's what's true anymore. And that's part of the narcissist game. They can gaslight you to the point where you're not believing your own self, but you believe in the lies that they're telling you. That's part of the enemy plan. So now they've won. And then we sit in here, we questioning everything. They have some, do you know, they have some people out here, they call themselves Christians or Christ followers, or they believe in God, but they have them questioning if God is real. They have them questioning, did God, you know, put me in a situation with this narcissist person? They have them questioning, you know, is it my fault that the children don't love me because they narcissist? They have you questioning a lot of things and all that is a form of gaslight. Hey, you know what? Matter of fact, now that I'm thinking about it, the news media, if you think about it, they gaslight us 24-7. And I'm talking about all of them, the CNNs, the, the CBSs, whatever your local news is. If you think about it, a lot of times, they gaslight you as well because what they do, they, they they inject fear into a situation like the pandemic. We can say that or, or whatever, you know, something happened down the street and it was a robbery or whatever. So they inject fear and they gaslight you to make you think you think everybody house in the in the neighborhood then got robbed. And there was one robbery in the last eight years. But the news will come out and make it seem like, oh, we got an increase in, in, in robberies going on. You said, I'm like, well, should I go buy a weapon or, or, or should I? You know, I need to start doing things to protect my family. And then you go look it up yourself. That was the first robbery in the last 15 years. And it just so happened, you know, it was a kid. You know, I'm just saying it. See, they go keen to mind in advance. Remember what I told you? I see she going to end up on the back row. I just seen it coming. Hey, how you doing? Keen to mind? I was talking about you before you got here. <laughs> Thank you for uh for coming in. But yeah, so social media. They gaslight you as well. The news media gaslights you as well. The churches, they gaslight you as well. Because the reason why I say churches, some pastors out here are gaslighting you because they telling you, you know, this all about, you know, tithes and offering and a building fund. And I didn't talk about it before, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse. So just think about what I'm telling you. That's forms of gaslighting because if you've been given to a building fund for 40 years at a church, and the church ain't, you ain't seen a brick. They ain't bought the land. The church ain't been built. They, don't you think that's a form of gaslight? Because, and they'll show you know how they, you know what I'm talking about, how you got that uh, thermometer looking thing. I forgot what it's called. And they painted red all the way to the top. And they'll say, we raised, you know, $500,000 for our new church. It's going to cost a million, but we got 500000 raised. Okay, so we raised 500000 Why some of our church members are homeless? Why some of our church members, when they get a divorce through, you know, with narcissist abuse or abusive situations, why would all use them funds to help them? Because we ain't built the church. We've been raising these funds since uh, eight, uh, 1987. It's 2021. We ain't built the church yet. I'm just saying. But again, I'm not talking about all church. I'm just saying gaslighting can go in any situation. We know it happens in the workplace. Prime example. The supervisor will tell you, hey, you know what? If you work hard and do these things, I'm going to put you in for a promotion. Gaslighting, because a lot of times what they do, they just want you to work hard and they go benefit off you working hard because they never promote you. Think about what I'm telling you. I mean, you never get promoted. You sitting there for three, four years. You didn't see people come in after you get promoted and moved up. You think it's something wrong with you. That's because the supervisor just gaslit you. And I know we don't want to think about gaslighting in all these different situations, but it's it's. It's all over the place, family. It really is. So also gaslighting. Let's get into manipulation because it's a form of uh, uh, gaslighting. Uh, the exercise of harmful influence over others. So, and this is coming to me right now. Think about this. It's the exercise of harmful influence over others. Who do the narcissist? Okay, let's, let's, let's play a quiz. Let's see who can get this answer. It's like Jeopardy. I don't know. Who do the narcissist influence the most and have them doing their bidding? So we got, I'll do a multiple choice. I'll make it easy for you. We have A, flying monkeys. We have B, anybody. We have C, enablers. And we have D, all the above. So y'all listening. A is flying monkeys. Y'all might want to pick that one. I'm just saying, I'm just, might, you know, some of the teachers give you the answer. <laughs> so, so matter of fact, we're going to make it easier. So A is flying monkeys and B is enablers. So if you think it's either one, A or B, or you think it's C, all the above, we'll, we'll take one out. Put A, B, or C in the chat because I'm going to put my answer. Because manipulation, you got to think, the narcissist gaslighting these people. So hold on. Let me see. So I'm going to put, 
I forgot what answers I just told y'all. I'm putting C. I, 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 took, I took D out. My bad. I took D, but D was uh, all the above too. So yeah, D. How you doing, War? So D or C was all the above. So if you do D or C, you right. So the thing about it, you got to realize that the narcissist gaslights the flying monkey. They gaslight the enablers. They gaslight anybody that's willing to listen. So your answer would really be D, which is anyone. So Tesla got yeah, y'all all right. So look at Shannon talking about. Wait, what was the question? The question was. Who do you think that the narcissist, who they gaslight, is it the flying monkey, the enablers, is it anyone, or is it D all the above? So the answer is actually D. I put C, but it's actually D. Because when you think about it, they will manipulate all these people mentioned above. That that's how the flying monkeys, that's where the smear campaigns come from, because all these people go against you. So they go have the enablers. That's people that's still being gaslit by the narcissist. And then when I say anyone, if you got a weak mind and you're not... You're not really, you know, in tune with your discernment or with God. You can fall into either A or B, which is the flying monkey or the enabler. So therefore, you also are being manipulated. So the answer will be D because you got to realize, hey, these narcissists are real crafty. You might think you're just going against one person because, you know, well, I got into it with him. I think they narcissists. Come on, fam. It's never just one. OK, when you when you went no contact with your with, with your with your spouse or your, your mom or your dad. How many people came to their defense? Just think about that for a second. When you went no contact, I'm going to say it again. When you went no contact or divorced your, your spouse because they narcissist, or you went no contact with a mom, dad, or siblings, how many people came to those people's defense but never defended you? I'll wait. Just think about that. I mean, the numbers can be, you know, I ain't got to put no numbers in the chat, but just think about that for a second. How many people actually came to that person, the narcissist defense, and didn't come to yours. And I can tell you, I know Shan, I know she she ran into that where they defended, you know, the family. And then, you know what I'm saying, kick, the, kick Shannon out. But you got to look at it like this. So how many people, it's like it's like a form of mind control, manipulation, gaslighting, however you want to say it. How many people are being gaslit in your own family? Just think about that. So if you go no contact with your mom, but your brothers, your sisters, your, your uncles, your aunts, your grandmother, if she alive, your grandparents, whatever, they all alive. And all your little nieces and nephews all go against you. Let's think about that. So they control and they manipulation and the gaslighting they do is way deeper than what you think. You think you're dealing with just this one person. No, demons weren't running packs just like wolves. So if they gaslighting, it's a bunch of people. You have to realize that's all in this circle. It's just you don't know it because you don't talk to them on a regular. So you deal with your mom, your daddy, your spouse all the time. So you can pick up manipulation tactics, gaslighting tactics, tactics and stuff like that from those people. It's the people you don't deal with in your family that have you questioning or have you trying to think like, wait, hold on, something not, something isn't adding up. So that's what I'm saying. So when you're dealing with one, I guarantee it's two. And if it's two, I guarantee it's four. If it's four, I guarantee it's eight and so forth and so on. Before you know it, it's 30 of them. You're like, whoa. Now it's, just, now it's like Tupac. It's me against the world because now it's just me against them. But in actuality, it's not me against them because I got God on my side. And I said this last week. I think about it when I got God on my side. I ain't got to worry about I ain't got to worry about y'all manipulation tactics. I ain't got to worry about y'all gaslighting tactics. I don't have to worry about that. Come on with it. Come on and bring it. But just realize when you Figure out who that head narcissist is. Like, I don't know if y'all ever used to watch vampire movies, but in a vampire movie or even in a wolf, they always got somebody that's the leader. It's a lead vampire. It's a lead, uh, a lead, a lead wolf in a pack. It's the same thing with narcissists. The way I think about it, it's a lead narcissist that's controlling everything in your own family. Now, when you go at that lead narcissist, you got to realize they're going to have collateral damage. It's going to have fallout for you calling that person out because that person is two-faced Maybe even three faces. I don't know if they have four faces, but I know they got a few faces. And let me break that down what I'm saying. The reason why I say they two faces, at least because we said this before. What they do is in front of family that don't live in the house, in front of family, they come off as sweet, kind. If it's a female, she's going to be, you know, at church all the time. She's going to cook the best food. She's the best cook, the best baker. When Thanksgiving, when Christmas come around, when Easter come around, everybody goes to this auntie house this grandmother house this mama house, whatever it is they go to this person's house if it's a man he always got a clean car he might have a trophy wife he has good credit he always take care of his family and that's all you see what you see is surface level you also me as well 
are all being gaslit. Let's think about it. So if I believe this man is not abusive, I believe this man next door is nice to his family. That's a form of gaslighting because you put on the front. I wonder you just show me your true self and come out there and, and you know, tell me, hey, you know, I'm a normal, but they're not going to do that. So you got to realize that the thing about narcissism and when it comes to gaslighting and manipulation, these people are very evil. They very deceitful and they very covert, like secret. No, I ain't even secret server. Like Navy SEAL. I think somebody said that last week. Sort of like Navy SEAL type operation. So, again, the reason why I say they two faces is because, one, they showing this happy family. Everybody gets along. The whole family has no issues. Nobody has never been touched as a little kid. Nobody has ever uh, been beaten. Nobody has ever did drugs. It's just the perfect family. And we all know nobody is perfect except Jesus. So that blows my mind right there when they all come out. When you look at these social media, people, I'm like, well, they never have nothing. They never argue. They never, they, they never fuss. There's no disagreements. None of the kids ever did drugs. I mean... Nobody has ever been a okay. So y'all family just okay. Y'all the change the whole family. The lie detector determined that was a lie. I'm just saying. So you have to realize the manipulation goes really, really deep, and the gaslighting goes even deeper because it's people that you think that you can love. Like you've been loving them for years, you think you can trust them, and you go tell them something, and guess what? They're gonna turn around and gaslight you. And you know what they say? But that's your mom. But that's your dad. And I think that's a form of gaslighting because you got to think about it. If I'm telling you, if I come up to you and tell you what, what my mom did or what my dad did or what my brother or sister did, and you in return, listen to everything I just said for the last 10 or 15 minutes, and you have the audacity to turn around and say, but that's your brother. So are you trying to gaslight me? So you're not believing nothing I'm saying. You're not believing anything I'm saying. And you just going off of what you've seen. Well, I never, you know, on social media, they come off so not. Okay. So I'm just telling y'all, manipulation, gaslighting, all these things go hand in hand. And the people around that you think you can trust the most. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let me know how to work out for you. That's all I can say, because that's the people that's going to stab you in the back. Let me see. Warriors say, I was gaslit today in front of my 40-year-old son. Then 20 minutes later, walked up and wanted a hug and said, don't be mad. See, that's what I'm talking about. So, so you, so you gaslit me, and then you had the audacity to turn around and say, you want to give me a hug to ease it. Man, come on, man. Come on. But that's what I'm talking about. That's okay. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. MB Joe say, forms of enablers, abusers, uh, they say that's ain't true. Saying negative and all of the belows on you, form of abusers. I'm innocent. I've been through so much. Enablers and setters say encouraging and positives. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. But yeah, exactly. They always defend the narcissist. It always, it's always like a clan or, or like a cult-like following. Even in your family, we might not call them cults, but when you think about it, it's like a cult-like following. They come out there and they defend the narcissist. You sitting there like you, you, you on the outside looking in at that point, like you was part of the family. But once you stood up, you stood up to your God-given purpose and you just said, you know what? This is not right. I can't do this anymore. I'm removing myself from the situation. Not the whole family got to go against me. But the whole time this narcissist can stand out there, you know they're good at defending themselves. They can go hand in hand with anybody. But the minute you stand up to them, then they crying and, and, and they can't take it. And, and, and they wondering why you're treating them like this. And they, they, they didn't did everything they could to help you. Gaslighting, gaslighting, gaslighting. Because did you really do everything to help me? Did you protect me when I got raped as a child? I'm just saying. Think about what I'm saying, fam. So again, you gaslight. So you didn't protect me as a child. So you can't sit there and say, well, I've done everything for that boy. I've done everything for that girl. Did you? Did you really? I'm just saying. I'm just pointing out the obvious. Just think, just think about that for a second. You really didn't. Nah. Nah. My wife said a whole suicide squad will follow and defend the Joker. Sure will. Would defend the Joker. And we know we call narcissists over here. We call them Jokers. So yes, definitely. So again, you got to realize, man, this, this thing is, is much deeper. It's not just at the workplace. It's not just in your family. It's at your church. It's at your local uh, workplace, you know, schools, whatever. It's happening all the time. And sometimes you get gaslit right in your own home. Hey, how you doing, Anna? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining. Sometimes you get gaslit in your own home. So it's crazy as that may sound. It's like, really? 
Like what? What is going on? Let me read a couple. We're gonna jump back in. Uh, let me see. Kingdom Mind and Venice say Norts have six faces like Leviathan. Ooh, tell it, tell it. She right. She right. Because they 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 almost. I I I'll go a step further. I don't know if, you, if for y'all that watched Shannon live a couple weeks back when she was breaking down the movie Split, where he had twenty four different personalities. I think it don't stop at six. I think they have even more than that, depending on how evil, how evil the demon is inside of them. I think it can be even more than that. So that's why I think it's even harder to try to discern when you're being gaslit because they're coming at you with so many different faces. You can't figure out what's what's what. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Oh, I say, but some of them are inverted narcissists, so it makes sense. People defend who they are. Exactly. So they did. I'm glad you said that. So you, they defending the narcissist because themselves, them themselves are also narcissists. I know you're like, you're like nah, I ain't, ain't no way my whole family narcissists. Well, who said they can't be? They're defending the narcissist. They're taking up for the narcissist. That's your flying monkeys and enablers right there. They've been part of the smear campaign, your own family. So they gaslighting you with different things, saying, you know, well, your mama, you know, your mama love you. Do shit. They saying, you know what, that, that, that's your brother. He he would never do that, but he did. That's gaslighting. I mean, if he punched me in my face or or tried to, you know, sleep with my wife or whatever the case is, or he tried to sleep with your husband, or she tried to sleep, I say he, or she tried to sleep with your husband. You taking up for them doesn't change the fact that they did what they did. Now, should we forgive them? Forgiveness is for us, not for them. So, yeah, I can forgive them, but it don't mean I have to forget what happened. So don't come over here trying to gaslight me on a situation where I'm fully aware of what just happened. It's like being in a car wreck and your car, you parked at a red light, somebody hit you from the back and they say, no, your car is in virtual hit me. Nah, bro. Nah. Nah, you hit me in the back. The, the traffic camera hopefully go show that or somebody else go see it or whatever. The police can figure out I was at a red light stop. So don't try to gaslight me. But that's how families do. They try to gaslight you on certain things and say, hey, you know what? What you believe ain't what it is. That's basically what it boiled down to. Warriors say, but try rest assured. I told him to fly like a bird. <laughs> she said, he told him to go fly like a bird. <laughs> Hey, I'm with you. I get you on that one. Get out of here. Be gone. Boothu said, also, people would rather ignore the evil and move on like everything is normal. Don't they? Don't they they want to act like everything is just copacetic. Nah, it's not. Nah, it's not. So they use the, the that's your mom, that's your dad, exactly. They want to shut the victim up. Yeah, they want to shut the victim up and shut them down. And not everyone understands the, the band. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm glad you said that. So, exactly. So, when you come, when they come to you and say, well, that's your mom, that's your dad. Why are you trying to shut me up? I got a story to tell. And then the crazy part, of, Butu, the, the crazy part about this whole thing, you got to realize is they trying to shut you down and something happened to them in their own household with their mom and daddy. But again, like Shannon just said, they might be narcissists. Well, hey, how you doing? Hell, the welcome, welcome. They might be narcissists as well. So you got to realize that as well. So again, I always say that over here. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Y'all know what that means. Go watch. Uh, uh, hey, how you doing, Mary? Hey, welcome, welcome. I can't remember the name of the movie now. Beverly Hills Cop. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so recognize the difference between facts and what's false. Because if you know in your heart, you know this stuff to be facts. You got video evidence. You done documented it. You got, you know, stuff that you done written down. Don't let anybody gaslight you, whether it's in a court case. Uh, you know, family uh, disagreement, whatever the case is, at work, you know, human resources, whatever the case is, don't let these people gaslight you on different situations. Because the difference between facts and false, it's a huge difference. One is true, one is false. One is facts, one is false. It's, it's a huge difference because if it's false, that means it's full of lies. And we know the narcissists love to lie. They love to lie. They love to lie. Like I think they wake up like, okay, what am I going to lie about today? I really believe that. I think they wake, they go to work. Okay, well, how can I get somebody in trouble? And what can I lie about to get somebody fired today? That's just how these evil people think. I, I'm just, I'm just saying. So you have to realize that when you know it to be facts, don't see when you go back and forth with them. That's that that whole transference of energy, or if you want to say supply or whatever words you want to use, you got to realize you're going back. That's what they want. You're giving them what they want. 
So if you know it's true, I'm not going to go back and forth with you on text messages. I'm not going to argue back and forth with you in person. I'm not going to, you're not going to call me back and forth and nah, I, I know what's true. I said what I said and that's it. And I move on. I, I, I don't have enough time for that. Hey, how you doing, uh, Dinah? Welcome, welcome. Uh, Coach Letitia, hey. So I don't have enough time for that. And you, when you, when you don't have enough time for that, see, when you, when you have time to go worship and read your Bible and pray, I'll let, like, te, like my sister said last night, like Tesla said last night, I'll let foolishness that you're dealing with, or the foolish that's coming towards you, if you ain't got time for it, you ain't got to worry about it. You sit here, you read, and you, you stay up here, do what you do, do what you do. You read your Bible, you pray. Shannon and I prayed early. You know, we, she helped me in the kitchen. We prayed. You know, we. we just always praying. I mean, we're not just telling y'all that just to say, oh, they in love. You should be praying as well. All this gaslighting, all this evil stuff that's going on around you, all this manipulation, all these things going on around you at work, in your family, at at, at, at Costco, at Sands, whatever store you go shopping at, you you seeing people do crazy things and, and you seeing all this stuff. You're not praying. You got a whole nother issue. You should be praying. You should be praying just like we pray over here. Like I told you, we pray Together, we pray apart and we come back together. We pray again as a family as well. I mean, you have to because at the times we live in it now, all this gaslighting and all this manipulation and all this evil stuff that's being said, you see it on social media, you see it on the news, you see it everywhere. You see it right in church. You see the pastor sleeping with women in the church and he's still the pastor of the church. So when you think about it, wouldn't it be a form of gaslighting? Because if you're the pastor, you're supposed to be leading the sheep. I'm just saying. Think about how much gaslighting that is. I'm like, nah. So now they got you looking crazy in church. Well, I seen it with the woman in the club, and then, well, she just had a baby. And I ain't talking about no particular pastor because there's a bunch of them we can name. But what I'm saying is you being gaslit in the church as well. So recognize the difference between facts and what's false. You know it to be true. You ain't got to argue with the people. Maybe this is your time to actually move on and go to another church. I'm just saying. You got to do what you got to do. Don't blame me. Don't don't hate the messenger like like Booker T used to say on wrestling. Y'all watch the, Don't hate the messenger. Hate the games. I'm just saying. Yeah. So gaslight has no truth in it, but are full of lies. Everything when you realize when you break down anything about gaslighting, it's just full of lies, full of deceit. Don't fall for these people. Things they they tell you all this stuff. Why? Why are they telling you things? Why are they coming over here to tell you things about somebody else? Why, when you tell them something serious that happened to you and your family, they tell you, well, that's your mom and that's your daddy. Why are you gaslighting me? I'm a grown man. I don't need you to gaslight me. That's why I told you your circle. When you start talking about this stuff heavy. Hey, how you doing, Alan? Be welcome, brother. Welcome. When you start talking about this stuff heavy and going deeper, and I'm talking about deeper. I ain't talking about surface level. North I ain't talking about you just, I'm talking about we going deeper in prayer and worship and breaking these things down. When you start doing that, them people gonna come around, man. They gonna come around. They gonna come around gaslighting. They gonna come around telling you like what you said. I don't agree with it. That's fine. I didn't say this before. How about you? Since you don't believe what I'm saying on my platform, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, whatever, how about you go start 1 800 I love narcs.com or, or whatever you wanna call it? I love narcs.com. I mean, you wanna start a web page? Do what you wanna do. You can talk about gaslighting the way you think it really is. You can talk about manipulation the way you really think it is. You can talk about the devil the way you think it is. And I guarantee you, nobody in this chat gonna be in your life because nobody, nobody going over there trying to hear about no Satan. Nobody going over there trying to hear you talk about, well, but the narcissist need love too. What? Man, we got seasoning down here in Louisiana that's called slap your mama. You don't really got to slap your mama. I'm just saying, you don't believe me. You get, I got, I think I had something in the car. I showed Shannon. I know Rizzo seen it before. People from down south know what I'm talking about. I ain't trying to get on food, but it's called slap your mama. I will slap you with that seasoning if you really believe that narcissists. Like somebody had me say that narcissist abuse wasn't real. That's, I had did a post some months back, but they told me narcissist abuse wasn't real. Uh, that's gaslighting. I, who, who are you lying to? You lying to yourself or you lying to me? Because I don't believe anything you say. I know for a fact that, gas, that narcissist abuse is real. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, people go come around and always try to flip the script and take what you're saying. And we know it's true, but they go take what you're saying and say, nah, that ain't true. It's no, it's no such thing as. That's narcissism. That's just an evil person you came across. Okay, so explain to me the ex-wives. Explain to me the ex-supervisors. Explain to me the ex the, the co-workers I used to work with. Explain to me the people I've met recently that I, I believe to be narcissists. Explain to me why all y'all in the chat then been with a narcissist, whether you dated them, been married to them, or 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 whatever. 
explain to me that explain to me the narcissistic children if there's no thing as narcissist i mean you got to explain this you got to go deeper than that brother you can't just tell me there's no such thing as narcissist man don't back that up with facts because i'm going to say you're lying but i'm not going to go back and forth with you i'm going to call you a lie and when i realize you're going back and forth block delete i mean you know you know how to block game real strong over here so i got to keep moving i ain't got time to play with y'all so yeah so that season i don't get endorsement from the season slap your mama but it is a real season it's called slap your mama and it's really really spicy and people put it in red beans and crawfish balls and stuff like that but that's for a whole nother story all right let me read this verse and then we're gonna jump right back in the chat so second corinthians 11 and 14 and no wonder for even satan even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Ah, well, here we go back to gaslighting again. This dude, this evil person, Satan, has disguised himself as an angel of light. It, that's gaslighting 101 right there, fam. That's, that's purity evil. That's gaslighting. And we know he's, <laughs> he's like the angel of death. He's deep, demonic, evil person, but he disguises himself as an angel of light. Think about that for a second. That's 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 gaslighting. That is gaslighting. Just like Satan say he can give you all these things on this earth, and he can give you some things, but you gotta realize you gotta pay back with your soul again. That's gaslighting and manipulation. Everything he says, everything, anything Satan promises you is gonna lead to gaslighting, manipulation, deceit. It it just does. I'm just saying, just, just think about that for a second. Sad, but true. So like I just said, Satan is the ultimate gaslighter. He's also the ultimate narcissist, when you think about it. He controls so many demons that he dispatched them out, you know, going to different people. And it's, it's basically a test. It's a test of your perseverance. It's a test of your fate. It's a test of, it's just a test. And some of y'all pass the test. Some of y'all fail. I failed the test in the past, but I'd be darned if I'm going to fail the test moving forward because now nah, my discernment. So you can't give me with that gas like now. Nah, now nah, you might try to, you might trick me a little bit, but once I figure out, nah, nah, I'm good. And that's male or female, bar girl, you know, whatever. I'm not going to fall for that. Nah, I can't do it, man. I can't. I will, I will not allow, my, my wife won't allow me to fall for that. I mean, we, we too strong over here with that. And we got people around it that's praying and, and everything. So I can't fall for that gaslighting. And gaslighting can be so subtle. It starts off small. They don't come with something big. It starts off small a lot of times. And it build, it's, build, it's like a building block. They build it like a house. Like they put, they start at one brick. And the next thing you know, they got a whole home built around you. It's like a wall because they didn't gaslit you the whole time. That's why you get in these relationships and you think you know the person, but you really don't know them because they gaslit you in the beginning. They'll say they got a six-figure job and, and, and they never cheated on nobody and, and, and you know, they don't hit women or, or you know, just all these things they tell you in the beginning, that's their representative. That's somebody that's just gaslighting you. And then a year goes by, a year goes by, and you probably not ready for you know, nine times you to fell in love with this person. You may got hanging around or whatever. Y'all might have moved in, which I pray you didn't, but y'all didn't move in. And then now this person shows you their true colors and you realize you was gaslit from day one. Because even the car they pulled, y'all know what I'm talking about. Even the car that they pulled up in, that, that nice Corvette that they pulled up in wasn't even their car. It was their homeboy car. They were just taking them to get gas. I'm just saying. So gaslighting started from day one. Your relationship, what I'm saying, I go deeper. Your relationship started on a lie. And if you don't have your discernment, if you're not on, uh, you know, having a conversation with God daily and you're not building up that trust, you're going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe every time. Every time you go fall for it. I believe you go fall for it every time. Now read this one moment. Jump in the chat. We have been a product of a gaslighting since childhood. What do I mean by that? What what could I be saying that we have been a product of gaslighting since childhood? Okay, y'all want to go there? Actually, I said it, but we're going to go there. Okay, let's break this down. So a lot of us have been told things maybe about our father or our mother, depending on what household you was being in. Gaslighting. When you was, uh, when you was touched or something happened to you when you was a child, when you went and told the adult parent, they said if they didn't do anything about it, or they said not, it didn't happen, it just was a dream, gaslighting. 
when you were a child, and when I say child, I say anywhere from, from one years old, some of y'all all the way up to 20, these people, even in high school, middle school, whatever, family, whatever, you was gassed to believe like, okay, prime example. If someone, if you if you was told all your life this person was your mom, and come to find out that person really your aunt, but you had to find out on your own, gaslighting. And I'm not making this stuff up. This is stuff that happens in our own family all the time. You got a person that's raised by this person. They thought that was their mom the whole time. Or they thought it was their dad the whole time. Kind of find out their real daddy is really your stepdad. That's not your real dad. Same thing with the mom. That's your aunt. Or that's your aunt and uncle that raised you. See what I'm saying? So it's gaslighting since childhood. And we can go down this list and keep going down the list. It's a bunch of different forms of gaslighting that happened since you was a child. I'm like, man, how is that possible that people, because when you think about it, it's like you go down the, this rabbit hole when you're a child. Like you go down and things things happen to you. So it's like Shannon talk about, it's like Telsha talk about, it's like uh, Joy talks about. When you think about it, if you don't break these soul ties and you don't do the work that you need to do, like really do the work, these things are going to keep happening. It's going like it's going to be a recurring thing. And I don't believe in karma, but it's going to be a recurring thing that's going to keep happening over and over and over again. And you not figuring out why. You're not sitting out thinking and having a conversation with God. This gaslighting and this manipulation is going to continue to happen. It's going to happen in your workplace. It's going to happen in your future relationships. It's going to, it's going to happen in your children relationship. It's going to continue to happen over and over and over again. You're sitting there like, man, why can't I get ahead? Why can't I get you know, like like a, 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 a woman for me, or why can't I get a man for me? Why are people just don't love me? It's because when, when you was a child, your family placed you in a situation, they gaslit you from jump, whether whatever happened to you when, when you was a child, and now you're an adult and you're still dealing with childhood issues. So if you don't deal with your childhood issues, all you're doing is gaslighting yourself. Yeah, I said it. I said it. So you gaslighting yourself because you know things happen when you was a child. You know things happen. You know things happen when you're a teenager. Some of y'all stuff happened just yesterday, and yet and still you gaslighting yourself. When somebody asks you how you are, you just oh everything fine, I'm good. But are you really good? Is everything really fine? Probably not. And we had to really, if I could be a fly on the wall or have a camera, y'all, we would see that everything isn't isn't right. Some of y'all still with the narcissist. I'm praying that you get out of the situation, but some of y'all still with these people and you still trying to figure out, well, why I can't get ahead. I said this before. God don't bless mess. Why would he bless you while you with a narcissist, somebody that's abusive, whether it's financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever. Why would he bless that? Just saying. How you doing, uh, Unbroken Sylvia Sunshine? Welcome, welcome. So why would God bless that? I don't think he would. Now, he's going to allow you to live. And, I mean, he's going to be able to eat and you probably have a roof over your head. But some of the things that you really need to do or some of the things that you want to do, you just gaslighting yourself at that point because you're not even understanding, you know what, this is something going on. So, something not clicking. Uh, the, the elevator not going upstairs. It's stuck in between floors. However you want to break this down. I'm not saying you're crazy, but something isn't registering. Something is off. And until you realize what that something is, you're going to continue going back and forth in the same, keep doing the same thing. All right, let me jump into the chat right quick. So like I said, it's not going to be a long video. I don't have a lot. It's Friday. I didn't want to keep y'all in here too long. So no, I want to try to get us out. Let me scroll up just a little bit. I don't want to go up too far. Let me see. Let me go. Okay. Uh, my wife said even Anthony, uh, Anthony LaVey realized when it was too late that the devil played him. And now he faced eternal, eternal damnation. Narcissists will face the same unless they repent. So you can go through all this stuff. Again, you gaslighting people, you gaslighting yourself, you know, all these things about the devil, what he promised you and these things. And then on the deathbed, then you realize, oh, you didn't mess up. You didn't mess up everything that dirty devil told you. You didn't mess up. So like Shannon said, you got to repent. You can't just, you just can't, you can't just go on, you just can't keep going through life, manipulating and gaslighting people and thinking you're, God's going to continue to bless you with things. Nah, nah. Had to say my family lied about what ethnicity I was. Sorry, I don't know why I'm, <laughs> you got hiccups or something. Uh, I was, they hid all our black family members' pictures in the basement. They are a dumpster fire hot mess. 
See, that's what I'm talking about. So again, we're talking about gaslighting on a whole other level. See, y'all talking about gaslighting like, you know, somebody's come up to you and tell you, look at this. They hid the... If that ain't deep gaslighting, if that ain't manipulation, if that ain't control, that's control. That's all that rolled up in one. Narcissism, all that stuff rolled up in one. I, I'm happy you was able to find out that all that stuff was a lie because a lot of people uh, uh, pass away and never know any of this stuff. They never knew, you know what I'm saying, that any of this stuff. Hey, how you doing, Janet? Welcome, welcome. We'll never know any of these things ever. Happen. That's messed up. And families will lie. You don't ever find out. Like some, like I said, some people be raised by, by they, they think it's their mom and dad, and they might die not even knowing unless a family member tell them or they're able to find out on their own, kind of find out it's their aunt and uncle. They mom and dad or the mom gave them up when when, when they was born. Come on, man. It, gaslighting, it, it's really, really deep, I'm telling you. Let's see. Let me read some more. Say blessings, bro, Solomon. And blessings to you as well. My sis say, take your time, bro. bro. Our sis always in here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see what else we got in here. Alan B say, uh, they probably you asleep to make gaslighting even more effective. But you, 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 you speaking the truth. So gaslighting is effective by itself. But when you add in deprivation of sleep, when you add in different control tactics, when you add in the multitude of lies they didn't told, when you add all these things in, it makes it even more effective because now you're almost like a slave. Like your mind is like, like, like slave to them, if that makes sense. So your mind is not even really your mind because you believe that's how a lot of kids and stuff like young kids. Is, I got a video I did. It was a short video. I got to put that out. It's called the devil gets us when we're young. I recorded a couple weeks back, but I hadn't put it out. But uh, that's why the devil tricks us when we're young, because that's how you're able to get people in cults and all these different societies, because it's, it's, it's all gaslighting and promises, uh, you know, you know, because they, they and, and this this is the thing about it. A lot of these children when you talk to them, they came from an abusive household. So the devil trick, he already got them. He already got them tricked because he had them in an abusive situation. But he tricked them again because now he put them in a cult because he the way it is, the cult leader came off like, well, you know, we're going to bring you. We don't beat people here. And, and, and we all about love and life. We don't hurt people here. You know. You know, talk to some of the people. They all brainwash themselves, and you can't believe nothing they say. That's all gaslighting. But when you get in, you thinking it's a family. So yeah, the, the first few weeks, oh, you like they want you to stay, so everything is nice. And then next thing you know, it's the same thing, but even worse than what you came from. So again, it's all gaslighting. So that's why all these cults are is it's deep, y'all. It's deep. So if you don't break them them soul ties, them family ties, when you need to. You're going to end up in a cult situation or like a David Koresh situation. I don't know y'all remember that. Waco, Texas back in the, uh, what, in the 90s, I think. David Koresh, when they had all them people, you know what I'm saying? Jim John, I mean, all these different people. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't open your eyes, you're going to end up in a worse situation than what you was in. Trying to run off because at that point you're running away from, from problems and I get it, but you're running into bigger problems. Cause you ain't fixing what you ran from, so you gotta fix what you ran from first before you go get involved with it, something else. Same thing, relationship. You don't fix the relationship that you just got out of. Now you divorce the narcissist. You break up their soul tie. You call these things out. You know what I'm saying? You you take that time in the wilderness to to you know to recuperate, basically recharge. If you don't, you gaslighting yourself because now you didn't fix. You said I'm saying you didn't fix that relationship. So how you gonna go into a new relationship expecting that relationship to work? It's not going to work. You wonder why you divorce again because you're doing the same thing again. You went from from pillar to post. You went from one relationship to another relationship. This relationship was abusive and, and demonic and a narcissist. And now you done ran over here thinking this is gonna be better. But guess what? You ran to another narcissist. You ran from demon to demon. That's all you did. That's all you did. And it sucks because when you find out, it's, all, it's almost one of the things where it's too late. You're like, wait, man, hold on, again. I can raise my hand. I did it. I ain't telling y'all nothing. I ain't did. Every time I talk about it, something that I didn't did, I didn't learn from. I did it. Went from one one situation to another one, not realizing. Wait, hold on. I didn't screw it up. I, I got out of one relationship. I got my butt in another one, and this one might be worse. That's probably worse than the first one. But if I'd have took that time to sit my little crazy butt down and realize, okay, you need to you need to chill out. 
be single for a while, talk to God, read your Bible. You know, I wasn't trying to hear that though. I wasn't trying to hear that. I was like, nah, I'm just gonna go get out of the situation. Okay, yeah, and we all know how that one ended. Ended up in a divorce. So you can't you can't do that. You can't go back and forth like that in no situation. Some of y'all quit a job and go run and find another job, thinking the grass green on the other side. And guess what? You get to that job like my shit stay. How many of y'all put go ahead, put a one in the chat? How many of y'all have quit a job thinking this job over here was better? Went over there and said, Man, this job worse than the job I was at. Go ahead and put a one in the chat. I didn't did this a few times, several times. Sure did. Sure did. I did. I mean, I was like, I'm thinking, okay, this job could be better. Gaslighting. The manager lied to me and told me all these good things that I, I could expect from this company. Man, within three, four weeks, I realized I had made a mistake. Y'all see the ones in the chat? See? I had made a mistake. I went over there. The manager gaslit me. told me he promised me this pay, this hours. I got there. Yeah, the pay was right. The hours was already cut. Next thing you know, we was going to the season where he had to do layoffs. Come on, bro. Gaslighting. So you can't tell me you didn't know that beforehand, but like I'm saying, come on, man. Y'all got, y'all, yeah. Okay. So it's the same thing. What the, it's a work relationship or a job relationship. If you jumping from job to job or relationship to relationship, it's easy for somebody to gaslight you because whatever they telling you sounds good. It's, it's, it sounds good to your ears. So you're like, oh, this, yeah, this job could be the one. Or are you talking to this woman? Oh, yeah, she the one. Yeah, whatever she's saying and how she looks sounds good. Same thing with the men, you know, y'all when the women y'all there talking to these men, it sounds good. You want a king, you want a man that 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 worship God and all this, and it all sounds good. But when you dig deeper, that person ain't nothing what they just told you on that first date. But you so quick to jump into another relationship, and here it is, you got gaslight, gaslit again. Like man, again, yeah, again, again. Had to say, for some reason, my job ended up okay the last years because I started working for myself. Mine was more going from one narc ex to another, knowing they were demons. See, yeah. So yeah, like I say, either way, when there's ex job, either way, we do it. We do it. We, we human. We do it. We just want to be with somebody. I don't want to be alone. I get it. You know, you don't want to work alone. You just think this job, your friends quit. They went over there, and God might have wanted you to stay at this job, but you run over there to that job, and God like. My son, my daughter, you done messed up. I told, I wanted you to stay over here because if you'd have stayed here, you'd have got promoted. And I'd have had you, just saying, just saying. Donna said, I learned that if I didn't get the lesson I was supposed to learn in a situation, no matter what it is, I am definitely going to repeat it. See, now that's, that's smart. That's wisdom. If you don't get the lesson that you are supposed to learn in any situation, we talk about work, relate, whatever. In any situation, no matter what it is, I'm definitely going to repeat it. So if you don't, if you're not living and learning, if you're not living and learning, I mean, that's the simple uh, answer to, uh, to that. It's like seeing the same mountain until you get it. See, thank you for sharing that. Yes, yes. So you have to realize that. Let me see. My wife say all narcissists and narcissist systems future fate and gaslight. Sure do. They sure do all the time, every day. And how, how Rizzo say that? Uh, bro, how you say that? Eight days out the week. <laughs> they, they do that eight days out the week, twice on Sunday. Same. I don't know if y'all counting, but they only got seven days a week. But yeah, eight days out the week, 28 hours a day. They only got 24 hours. So you figure that one out. Just saying. Rizzo say it's truly, it truly is mind control. Uh, they say, though, if, if you kill the body, the head will follow Yep. Yep. That's true. That's true. All right, let's keep moving, family. Bible verse. Uh, first Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy. Uh, four one. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some would depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. So why does why does it has anything to do with gaslighting? It has a lot to do with it. Because you listening to, well, you're not listening to the Bible, but you listen to like what it's saying in the Bible to uh, uh, deceitful people or spirits and things like that. 
you're getting gaslit because what the Bible tells you is true. So you're not believing what the Bible says. You want to go find out something on your own. And that's fine. God gives us free will. I get that. But when you start believing some of these other things, it puts you in a situation and puts your family in a situation that you probably shouldn't be in because you're devoting, like you said, devoting themselves to the sea for spirits and teachings of demons. So you're you're shacked up with a demon or you're married to a demon. Y'all going to a demonic church. Y'all doing demonic worship with this yoga and all this other stuff. I ain't, ain't going to get get in too deep with that. But and think about it. You got to realize, look here. If I'm not being true to myself or my family, then what am I doing? So if I'm believing what some of these people are saying, I know I know it don't sound right. I know it might be a little bit evil. But if I can't trust my own discernment, we got we got big problems. So if you can't trust yourself, you're gaslighting yourself. Just saying, you gaslighting yourself. You, you, I can't gaslight yourself, family. We can't do that. So think about all the lies the narcissist has told you. Let's, let's take we're gonna take thirty seconds to think about. And I know it, you can think about way more lies than that, but just think about all the lies through the years that the narcissist has told you. Little lies, big lies, small lies, in between lies, little white lies, whatever you want to call it. A lie is a lie, whether it's little or big. Just think about all the lies. When you called them and asked them what they was doing, and they said that they're home ball house uh, uh, playing video games, but really they had this girl house. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Lies. Or when you call her and ask her how it is out with the girls, but she over there at this man house cheating lies and some of it just as simple as asking them what their name is when you first meet them and they tell you something else and you kind of find out their name lies when they tell you they don't cheat lies now i'm not saying nobody don't cheat that's not what i'm saying that's not what i'm saying people do change people don't cheat i get that but this particular person this narcissist is what i'm telling you lies when they say oh i never done nothing like that before lies all lies, all gaslighting, all part of manipulation from day one. So the narcissist has told us lies through the years. And we, some of us still trying to unpack some of them lies. We, we didn't been divorced from them and still trying to figure like, man, was that a lie? Might have been a lie too. It's sad, but it's true. It's sad, but it's true. I see, see, I see Tersh in there cutting up again. I see y'all talking about some uh, slap your mommy in there. Look. <laughs> She said, I need some slap your mama on this chicken. <laughs> so, hey, that season is spicy. I'm telling you, we got we got down here, we got Tony Sacherie, and we got that slap your mama, and that slap your mama made in Louisiana. I think it's made in, I want to say, in Homer, Louisiana. That season, it got, a little, it got some kick to it. That, 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 you bite that chicken, you'll be in there sweating. I can tell you that much. I don't know if I ever told y'all this. I don't know if Shannon ever told y'all that story about the, uh, about when she ate my gumbo when she first, <laughs> I had cooked for in Louisiana, she ate my gumbo. We sitting there watching TV, and uh, I'm you know the 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 island was here, but I was facing you know watching TV back behind me. Shane was sitting to my left, and I I just happened to turn around, look at her. She just dripping with sweat. I'm like, man, you okay? She said, yeah, this food is good. She said, but it got me sweating. I ain't even had no slap your mom, and I think I had Tony Sasseries, and that's what I had, and then some other seasoning spices. But she was just sitting there sweating, but steady eating the food, and then she wanted to hold another bowl. I'm like, man. so she ate two bowls of that gumbo. And that gumbo was. It was good. It was just spicy. So I don't, I try not to cook with them spicy anymore because I don't want my wife to sit there and sweat. She ate it, but she was sweating. So tell you, I'm telling you, eat that slap your mama or Tony said, yeah, it's going to be on your chicken. You'll be in there sweating. I didn't do it. I See, I didn't even do it, Joe. It wasn't my fault. You can blame your sister. Tell for bringing that up with that chicken. I didn't, I didn't say nothing about it. See, she went there and I just told the gumbo. <laughs> just say, here we go with food talk. Hey, that's something we do. I'm from Louisiana. What you want me to do? I like to cook. I like to eat. I mean, if I need to take out a roast the 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 uh cook for tomorrow or something. But anyway, yeah, it's not my fault. You can blame Telsha. She 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 did it. She did it. Look, she said it was good though. See, she's talking about the gumbo. She laughing. I mean, when I say dripping with sweat, you would swear she just ran eight, an eight mile run and, and didn't have no water. And she just was sweating and sweat. Like, what are you doing? I say, man, drink some water. Like, what? But nothing I can do. She wanted to eat some more, so she ate more of it. I, you know, yeah. <laughs> Try to say, listen, we're on the front row of trying to focus. Don't do this to us. I, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm focused. I'm, <laughs> I'm good. 
Yeah. Uh, Janice say, being a truth truth teller seeker, I was crushed to realize my parents lied to us about Santa. He never ate the cookies, milk, or left presents. For, see, I didn't even think about that. When you think about that, think about how evil that is for them to lie about Santa Claus. And I've done that too to my kid, you know, back before I knew Santa Claus was all evil and all demonic because they try to make it seem like he's God, like he knows all, sees all, know when you've been good, know when you've been bad. That's some evil mess when you think about it. So we're talking about Santa Claus. That's gaslighting 101 right there. That's gaslighting to a whole nother level. But families still today will tell their children, yeah, y'all got to go to bed early. We're going to leave, like she said, going to leave out some cookies and milk and then... They go go over there, you know, your old greedy daddy go sit there and bite the dog on cookie. Talking about it was Santa Claus. He bit it, but he had to leave because he had all other houses to get to. He, oh yeah, they ain't had no presents out there. And then he, okay, so Santa left presents. Okay, all right, but yeah, that's gaslighting one on one. Like Alan B just said, Satan Santa. That's, yeah. Oh, Santa Satan. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, oh, matter of fact, let's let's go through some gaslighting examples right quick before I move on. Let's go through some gaslighting examples before I move on. Uh, trivializing. They minimize your feelings, suggest your emotion, emotions don't matter, or accuse you of overreacting. How many of y'all didn't happen to you? They accuse you of overreacting. Like you, you, okay. That happens all the time. The next one, countering. They question your memory, make up new details. Y'all listening to this? They make up new details. So they add in their own stuff. You know what I'm saying? They add in their own stuff to your memory. So they, they make up new details or deny that something happened. They might blame you for the situation instead. What? Why well, on. Uh, because you're like, no, nah, I remember it happened like this. Like, no, nah, no, nah, I remember you the one. Yeah, you grabbed the door and that's why the door. Or whatever the thing is. I'm just saying door, but whatever it is. So next, we got withholding. They brush off your attempts to have a discussion or accuse you of trying to confuse them. But yet and still, they're confusing you. So they gaslighting you, but they using this as a tactic. Okay, diversion. When you bring up a concern about their behavior, they change the subject or turn it back on you by suggesting you're making it up. What, what kind of craziness is this? Come on, man. Come on, what? So that diversion is deep. Now that I didn't read that again. So they basically taking what you said and just flipped it all on you and then, you know, saying, hey, now nah, you made all that up. What? So now you questioning your, your memory like, man, I could have sworn. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all went back like, man, I could have sworn that it happened like that. Then you, you know, after listening to them, you don't realize it's gas. Like you like sitting there like, oh, maybe it didn't. Maybe, maybe it didn't happen. So they got you questioning what, what you know to be true again because diversion so let's let's get they got two more forgetting or denying so when you mention a, a specific event or something something they said they might say they can't remember or tell you it never happened at all again you know this to be true you 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 was there you know it didn't happen 40 years ago it happened last year so you know it to be true but they say no nah, I can't remember that or I don't that never happened never happened so last one, discrediting. That's a big one when you think about it. They suggest to other people that you can't remember things correctly, getting confused easily, or making things up. This can threaten your career when it happens at work. How many of y'all, this is happening in your own family? Remember, we just discussed this. Discrediting is when that person in your family walk up to you and say, well, that's your mama. So again, you discrediting what I'm telling you. You telling me what I told you isn't true and telling me, well, that's just my, my mom or that's just my daddy or that's just whoever. I should just let go. But you're not in this situation. So don't discredit what I'm saying. You go do that over there with your family. So again, they gaslighting you again. So that was examples of gaslighting. That discrediting is, is deep. It's deep when you think about it. It's really, really deep. Like for real, for real, like deep, deep. Okay, let's let me kick uh let me get back on here. Hold on. So take time away from the person that is gaslighting. I don't care who it is, I don't care who it is. Ways to recover from this stuff when you really this is when you realize you've been gas 
uh, been in a gaslighting situation, take time away from that person that's gaslighting you. Don't keep running over there. Don't keep telling them things because they gaslighting you, using things against you, using your own stories against you. So take time away from those people. Hey, we all want to get into the end. So we're going to be on time tonight, family. Document and collect evidence. Why do I? So we talk about documentation all the time. Because if it's your spouse that's gaslighting you and lying to you, that's why I'm telling you to document and collect evidence. Because if they're doing it, you're probably going to need this at some point whenever y'all go through a divorce. Because it's bound to happen at some point. If they're lying about all these different things. You, you, you know they gaslight you. You know they're narcissists. I'm not an advocate for divorce, but what I am telling you is probably going to happen. You know, you, you know, deep down in your heart, you know that this marriage is going nowhere. It, it's like going down a dead end street. You got to turn around and come back out of it. It's, it's the same thing. So something else you can do for gaslighting. Because remember, this was called how to counter gaslighting is to call the behavior out. How about you just call it out? Don't because now if you don't call it out, you gaslighting yourself and you gaslighting them by not saying anything. So say something about it. This is this this is your it's your sanity you playing with. It's your your mind. It's your family. Your your children. You know, it's a lot riding on this. You might think it's just you, but when you look at the whole scope of everything, it's a lot riding on that. It's, it's, it's your life, your soul, your family. It, you know, it's a lot. It, some of y'all is your careers, your jobs. It's a lot riding on this. So if you don't call it behavior out and keep pushing on the rug and letting it go. Well, it's like it's just gonna get bigger. And bigger and bigger. So the gaslighting that you was uh, getting last year is going to be even worse the following year. And guess what? The year after that or the, or the weeks after that, it's going to get worse and worse until you stand up. And then see, sometime when y'all finally stand up and say, I had enough, it's almost too late. So you got to call it behavior out right when it happens. Right when you realize you're being gaslit, go ahead and call it out then. Because then at that point in time, the narcissist knows, okay, I can't use that tactic. Now they're going to try something else. They're gonna try, they're gonna try gaslighting again, but they're just gonna try it differently. But they they're gonna know they can't do it that way. But every time they come to you, I don't care which way they come at you, if you call out the gaslighting, they're gonna realize something. Okay, I can't get over on Solomon like that. I can't get over on Shannon like that. So I'm gonna try things differently. Or I'm not, I'm just not gonna gaslight them because it's it's not working. It hasn't worked to this point. So why should I keep doing it and wasting my time? See what I'm saying? So I just said this the other day, fight from victory, stand in confidence. Fight from victory. When you realize you're being gaslit, like, man, nah, nah, get out of here with that. You got to keep moving. I don't play them games over here. I don't I don't want that around me. Just like I told you, I don't like yes men around me. People that say yes, don't work, don't really call you out on your own stuff. Now you gaslighting me. You That's reverse gaslighting to me. I don't even know that's a term, but it's like reverse gaslighting when you got yes men because if I know I'm doing something wrong or if I don't know and I don't have people around me telling me, you know what, something that wasn't right or something, you know, that was good. But we might want to change a couple of things. If I don't have those people around me and all they say, oh, yeah, that was good. That was good. That's where that's gaslighting. Still, you gaslighting the person. So if you're doing that, you're the gaslighter at this point. So you gaslighting somebody else. So it's not all about us just being gaslit. You can get gaslit. You can gaslight somebody else as well. And some of us have done that before. I don't like yes men around me. So I'm sure not go. Be a yes man to somebody else. I'm gonna tell you a lot of people don't like what I man. I don't want to hear that. Well, why you ask me then? If you want somebody to gaslight you, go dial 1 800 gaslight. I'm pretty sure that's a real phone number. Nah, I'm playing. I don't know that's a number or not, but they might have a number. I don't know. You call it and get somebody that go listen to your lies or whatever you want to tell them and go tell you what you want to hear instead of what you need to hear because it's a different what you want to hear is being gaslit and yes man. What you need to hear is what God told you you should be doing, but you don't want to hear that. You want to do this demonic devil stuff and and yeah so keep doing that let me know how that work out for you so another way to counteract gaslighting tell somebody about the situation don't keep it to yourself tell somebody like i'm talking about a real good friend somebody you really can trust if you know you've been gaslit at work or ain't, even in your own family tell somebody that way you're not dealing with this on your own so that way when things start to happen somebody else can say oh yeah and they can start, they can start seeing the stuff, you know what I'm saying? They see the stuff happening around them. So now it's like, oh, okay, I see it now. You ain't got to tell them the whole thing. You just point out a couple of things and then let them figure it out on their own. That's how I like to do it. That way I'm not leading you by saying, hey, you know, this, that, and the third. Nah, nah, not on my watch. Not on my watch. 
So do I hold on? Do, let me read this Bible verse first, and I'm gonna jump back over here because I got uh I got a thing that I got. Uh, it's called uh, "How Do You Feel?" Gaslighting often leads to like, what does it lead to? You know, by not dealing with some of these things. So it's see uh, a lot of us think just gaslighting is just I don't know. You think well, just a person just telling me a lie. No, it's deeper than that. Look at what Heather said earlier. How they hid pictures and 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 you know what race we are, intimacy, and all these other things. Realize how deep it is. Like the story I told you earlier, how people have they raised by an aunt and uncle thinking that's their mom and dad. That's real deep gaslighting. That's that's really, really deep. And then the family will scoot down the rug and you will never find out until, like I say, maybe it's old auntie or somebody finally tell you, or you just stumble across, you know, the birth certificates or something like that. Shannon spoke about that herself, like stumbling across some birth certificate and realizing, wait, wait, that's not even our daddy in there. You know what I'm saying? But some of these moms, they so quick to get remarried. Like I just said, running from pillar to post, they want the support system. You know how the older parents are. And they just go get remarried. And you young, you like two or three, so you don't even realize. And then they'll say, that's your daddy. You you bought up in this household realizing or thinking this person is your dad. Only to find out that's your stepdad. Maybe your dad got killed years ago. Or maybe he's he might be right across town. You might have walked right by your dad or right by your mom, not knowing because the whole family has kept how they say that they kept the family secrets because they don't want it to get out. Man, come on, man. We we can't we can't continue doing it. We gotta break these break these things. Like Shannon always said, we gotta break the chain. We cannot continue to do this over and over and over again, generation through generation through generation. It, come on, man. Let's, let's, come on, man. So this is my verse uh that no one trans tra transgress. And wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things. As as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. It's a warning right there. All that, all that evil, all that, all that gaslighting, all that lying, all this deceit, all these different things. Let God avenge that. A lot of y'all want to run over there and I'm gonna avenge. Nah, it's not for you. It's not for you to go over there and event. Nah, nah, why? Why you want to do it? What you gonna get out of it? You see, some of y'all think y'all gonna feel good, and then when you go do it, then you end up feeling worse off than what you was before. So, well, you know what you just did? You gaslit yourself to go do something that you knew was wrong, and then now you're feeling the after effects of that. You see what I'm saying? So, gaslighting. I'm telling you, we gaslight ourselves probably more than the narcissist sometimes, just because the narcissist didn't trick us so much. So now we're just sitting here gaslighting ourselves. Just saying. I'm just saying. So let me read this. So how do you feel? Gasly, gaslighting often leads to doubt and questioning yourself. I discussed this earlier. Let's go. We're just recapping. Uh, wonder constantly whether you're too sensitive. So they have you wondering. You know, maybe I'm too sensitive because the way they do things. You know, they, so they have you wondering. They have you apologizing frequently. I'm I'm guilty of that. I, I worked on that. You can ask Shannon. I used to apologize, apologize, apologize for stuff. That's because of the gaslighting and things that happened in my life. So I'm apologizing for things I don't even need to apologize for. You see what I'm saying? So how many in the chat has, if you, you know, apologize just for things like all the time to different people and don't need to put a one in the chat, if you just always, you know, apologize. That's that's part of gaslighting. Think about that. If you always apologize, like you didn't even do nothing wrong. You'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry for, sorry for what? And Shannon didn't told me that before. She's like, She's like, nah, she said, you know, what you apologize for? You ain't got nothing to apologize for. So put a one in the chat if you apologize like constantly for things you haven't even done yet. Look at all them one. Look, look at that. I can put mine in there too because I still do it, but not as much. I told you God's still working on me too. Look at all the ones in the chat though. Look at that. All them ones. Look. Anna, Dinah, Ace. Ones, Auntie Karen, one, the dining put ones in there a bunch of times. Keenan Mount Advance, one, my wife, one. I put my one in there. Alan B, Surrender Life. I mean, look at that. It's, it's, <laughs> say, did I say one? <laughs> yeah. Just say one. I used to. Amen to that. Anna, one. Yeah, I used to do it bad too, Heather. I used to do it bad too, but I didn't came a long way. I still got work to do, but I didn't came a long way. On apologize. That's a form of gaslighting. That means something happened in your life 
probably childhood or upbringing or something like that, where they have you apologize. And it could, it could be even a relationship like a spouse where they have you apologize so much to where you just naturally apologize to people for just different stuff and you have done nothing wrong. Nothing at all. My brother said I used to one. Yeah. So yeah, it's and I say working on it. Same here. That's what hey, that's all we can actually do is work on it. So that like I said, that uh that 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 gaslighting plays a huge part in that. So also uh struggle with decision making. So you know you you struggling with making you know small decisions, uh feel general generally unhappy, confused, and not like your your usual self. So you just all off, you know, like from day to day, like. You might be happy this day, and then before the day over, you just sad and angry. Next day, you're mad, and then by the end of the day, you have just all over the place. So that's kind of what that is. Again, gaslighting, because that's what the narcissist does to you. They gaslight you, so you're not even acting as yourself. I told you, I went to uh, Kroger's grocery store in my night clothes. That wasn't, that wasn't me. I'm not saying that to be funny. It's the truth. I, the narcissist had me so twisted that I went to the grocery store in my night clothes, and just so happened my supervisor was there. Big Mike is like, Boy, what you doing? And I was like, what? And they know what's wrong. Now I look back up. Yes, something was wrong. In your night clothes. Now I see people that do it. I'm like, man, they probably were the narcissist. I can't, I don't know that for sure, but it makes me wonder. Like, they probably were the narcissist. That's why they're out here with their night clothes on, looking cray cray in the grocery store. You know, still got some of the women still got their bonnet on and all this other stuff. Like, you know, really, are you sleepwalking all the way to the store? I mean, you don't know, you got all this stuff on. I'm just saying. So you got to realize gaslighting is very, very deep. Uh, and finally say, avoid loved ones since you don't know how to explain what's going on. How many of y'all have done that? You avoid loved ones because the narcissist gaslighting you so much. You, you don't have no, you, you just don't understand how to even begin to explain this to anybody else. So you just stay away from family for that fact. So you have to realize when that gaslighting is on that level, you stay away from family and friends because you don't want to have to say, Cause they looking at you like, well, you never used to dress like that, or why your hair cut like that, or why you, you know, you, you, you know, you, you're not your usual self. You didn't put on weight. You skinny. You, you look depressed. You look sick. You're, what's going on? You don't want to have to answer all them questions because all that gaslighting has done that. So you sitting there like, no, what I'm going to do? I'm going to check myself out, and I'm not going to hang around family because I know if I go around family, they know the real Solomon. So I can't go over there because then they gonna call me out. My sister said, that's deep, bro. I, I'm just calling it like, I, like it is, sis. So just think about that. Just think about that. Think about that. How many of you have done that, just stayed away from friends? I ain't talking about no contact. No, I'm not. No, no, no. We're not talking about no contact. It's a form of no contact, but you're doing it because you were a narcissist and they've been gaslighting and you don't know how to explain your whole situation. So that's why you stand away from family. I think a lot of us probably have done that. Or you've seen people that have done that to their own family. You think it's something else going on, but no, it's just a situation that they're in with this narcissistic person. They don't know how to explain. They don't even know what a narcissist is. So how can they explain it to you if they don't even know what they're dealing with themselves? They don't know that the demon inside this person is actually destroying the whole family. So again, how can they explain it to you if they don't understand what's going on themselves? So that's why we got to continue talking about narcissist abuse. That's why we got to continue talking about God. That's why this isn't my last video because it's many, 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 many more videos in me because the message has to continue getting spread. That's why Telsha is out there. That's why Joy Pink Girl teaches is out there. That's why my wife, North Free Living, is out there. That's why Auntie Karen, Cluster Be Free Karen, is out there because the message is we got a lot of work to do, family. We got a lot of work to do. Now, don't get me wrong. We have made strides. We have done good work. We have done great work, but it's a lot more work to do because you look at the situations that we see on the news, on, on different social media, we know narcissists are running rampant all over the world. They are. They are. Some of y'all live right next door to a narcissist. Some of y'all work next, you know, if y'all in your cubicles or whatever, you work right next to a narcissist. Some of you don't want to admit it. Some of y'all are married to a narcissist, but I'm pretty sure if you're here, you realize something is wrong, so you know, so I'm praying that you know you're married to a narcissist. But what I'm saying is narcissists are everywhere. Like Shannon said, they're everywhere. Everywhere you turn, grocery store, I don't care, football game, back, wherever you go, it's a narcissist somewhere in that area. So again, we have to be on, that's what I love about this community, how we came together. Everybody tells it in their different ways, 
but the message is consistent about narcissists, about getting out, about getting help. If you ain't getting help on all these different channels and all these different platforms, I, I don't know what to tell you. You guys like yourself because the, the help is all up in this chat room. And they have even more help. I'm just saying it's all up in this chat room. So you gaslighting yourself. You're saying, well, I don't know what to do. How you don't know what to do? Telstra just told you last night about foolishness. My wife went live earlier telling you about praying this thing out. Joy dropped the video earlier today. I'm live right now. Uh, Auntie Karen had a, 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 a thing yet, yesterday on Clubhouse. Come on, man. So so how do you, how can you gaslight yourself and said, I don't know what to do? You know what to do. Say the truth. Stop being a yes man to yourself. Say, stop saying, I don't know what to do. Say, I don't want to do it because in the at the end of it, you just don't want to do it or you scared of what's going to happen when you go no contact or when you file for divorce with this narcissist or when you quit this job that God been trying to tell you to quit. That's what the real problem is. It's not that you don't know or you know what to do. If you didn't watch enough of our videos, you know exactly what to do. It's you scared what you scared on what's going to happen. You scared of the aloneness. You scared of this your second marriage, your third marriage, or maybe it's your first marriage. You have, you never thought it would be like that. You think we did too? Do you think I thought I'd be married? Think about what you're saying. You think you're the only one that's been through this narcissist abuse? No, you're not. You think you're the only one that have a narcissistic mother? No, you're not. You think you're the only one that was abused as a child? No, you're not. You think you're the only one that had workplace issues with narcissists, supervisors, and managers, and they constantly picking on you? No, you're not. But what are you going to do about it now that you know all this information? Are you going to continue going through the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results? Well, we all know how that works out. That's the definition of insanity. So I'm not calling you crazy, but if the shoe fits, I know how to say and go, wear it. I, I don't know what else to tell you. I can't. It's like leading a horse to water. I can't make him drink. I can sit here and talk about narcissist abuse till I'm blue in the face. Auntie Karen can sit in there and talk about narcissist abuse till she blue in the face. Same thing with Telsha. Same thing with my wife. Same thing with Jar. Anybody else that's talking about, they can talk about it till they blue in the face on their platform. They can have 4,000 people in their live stream. And guess what? It's still going to be a few hundred of y'all that's still not going to understand what's going on. But you're getting information just like everybody else. And I know everybody learn at different levels. Well, that's why you got all these different things. If I'm not the teacher for you, well, go over there to tell you. That way you can learn. If she not, go over there to Joy. Go over there to my wife. Go over there to Auntie. It's teaching for you to learn. Go read some books. Go do some study. Go read your Bible. So don't sit there and tell me, well, Simon, that's just because you, just because what? Just because what? Well, what are you going to tell me? Well, that's just you and Shannon. Uh, man, come on, man. Come on, man. Because people will say stuff like that. Well, that's because, you know, y'all got it figured out. No, we don't have it figured out. But we made a decision and realized what narcissist abuse is, and we're learning this thing together. Tell she had made a decision about what narcissist abuse So she put out on a platform. Same thing with Joy. I mean, once you learn some of this stuff, it would be stupid of us not to tell other people. I'm just saying. It's just like if I knew a way for all y'all to become rich. The person I am, it'd be stupid enough for me not to tell y'all the way, you know, now, again, that's leading a horse to water. The thing about, I can tell you, but a lot of people want this get get rich quick scheme, or they want this quick blessing, or they want this quick healing. I, I don't know how to do none of that. I don't know how to do none of that. God don't even do none of that. So how I'm going to tell you how to do a quick blessing? Or I don't know how to do that. I'm still working on my healing, even though I'm out here. Every week doing YouTube, I'm still working on my healing, but people think, oh, well, uh, him and Shannon got it together. Look how they praying. They anointed or whatever. Tell her, oh, tell she got it together because she talked about birds and all this. So, tell, yeah, she good. She got everything together. Uh, Joy, oh, she, she must be good because she got video. No, this part of our healing journey as well is not just us talking about this stuff. It's not just views or likes. It's also about us spreading the message about narcissism as a whole because if we keep talking. More people gonna be led to Christ. More people gonna learn about it's not just this person crazy. They actually narcissists. They got some demonic things inside of them, and there's nothing you can do about. It. I don't care how much praying you do for them. I don't care how many times you go to church. I don't care they get baptized twenty times in the water or go down to the creek and get baptized by that minister. I don't care how many times you do that. That person still gonna be demonic and narcissist, and still go treat you the way they've been treating you because nothing's gonna change because you're gaslighting yourself. And that's what this whole mess is about. So if you think that 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 by you doing some of these things is going to change the narcissist, you're gaslighting yourself. You're gaslighting yourself. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You're gaslighting yourself. If you think that if you go down in prayer 
24 7 praying for this person loving on this person cooking for this person sleeping with this person doing all these things and taking trips with it doing all these things with the per you're gaslighting yourself they still not gonna change because they go cheat on you when you was at home or they go cheat on you when you're on a trip with your girlfriend they go cheat on you regardless so you can't change the outcome you just go prolong it because while you stand you know uh tucked up under them or stuck up under them however you want to call it all you're doing is prolonging what's going to happen anyway it's going to happen. So you're gaslighting yourself again. So stop gaslighting yourself and stop letting other people gaslight you as well, because people will gaslight you and will continue to gaslight you as long as you allow them to gaslight you. And then you on the reverse side, if you continue gaslighting yourself, you're just going to fall deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you're going to lead to depression, anxiety and suicide because gaslighting. I know you're like, well, gaslighting can't go that deep. Why well, can't? It can. It does. It will. It has. Just saying. Let me read some of y'all comments. We're going to pray and get about it. We right on time tonight. So we did good tonight. But I just wanted to make sure that we all on the same page when it comes to gaslighting and realize gaslighting happens in families. It happens in your you know, your relationship with your boyfriend, girlfriend. It happens with your children. Your children can gaslight you. I know y'all might not want to believe that. I remember I did that message a couple weeks back about narcissistic children. I know it's a tough topic, but your children can gaslight you as well. Prime example, and I'm a, I'm a, we're going to get a recent message and pray. Prime example, your child comes on and say, the teacher uh, the teacher was mean to me. You go up there, you get dressed, you go up there that next morning, and you up there raising raising hell and the, you know, uh, taller, calling the principal by their name and want to fight the teacher and all that, and kind of find out your child just didn't want to do their dog on homework, or they, you know, you, the teacher was trying to help them with a test, and yet this, you didn't went off on half truth. So you just got gas lit by your child because they didn't want to do the assignment. I know y'all want to hear that, but I'm just saying gaslighting happens all over the place. So don't act like I'm the only one that a child has come up to and say, oh, well, the teacher did this. I, oh, maybe I'm by myself. I might be by myself. Maybe y'all have great children and that has never happened. I don't know. Maybe you never heard of that, but I'm telling you, I know for a fact that children will do things like that and it's gaslighting as well. Definitely is. All right, let's read some of y'all stuff so we can get out of here. Let's see. Let's see. Thank you again for being here with me. <laughs> Auntie Karen said, tell us all. I seen that when you dropped that earlier. I seen what you said about putting that slap your mom in a potato cell. I seen that. I just, I, I was I was in the zone talking. I seen what you see. She was on the back row. The whole the whole thing. She said, put some slap your mama in the uh, potato salad with raisins. That ain't going to make it taste better, Auntie Karen. Still going to be there. With raisins? And I love raisins. But not my potato salad, though. I can't do that one. Nah. I can tell you one thing. If I see it at the at the at the, at the picnic or the, the the company function, I know who cooked it. <laughs> I know who cooked it. <laughs> I know that much. True boss bed drop. Just doing my little part. Doing my little part. My wife say, take the leap of faith and do what Yahweh is telling you to do. He rewards obedience. He definitely does. Don't ask for his blessings if you would not heed his instruction. Woo! Ooh, that's deep because a lot of people they want to do all this praying and all this fasting and all this stuff. And Alan be talking about fasting and everything. The brother had a good room on uh clubhouse this week, just broke it down. But you do all that and then don't want to do the work after man. Come on, man. You just gaslit yourself, you just wasting your time. It's just like when they start these New Year's resolutions. That's why I ain't do New Year's resolution. I just make myself to just do the stuff that I want to do. They do this New Year's resolution. Oh, I'm gonna lose 30 pounds. January, they come in strong. Y'all know they come in strong, they lift the weights. They running, they sweating, they lose three pounds. February, they done. Tell, tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Tell, tell me. Put, put I'm lying in the chat if you think I'm lying. Yeah, some of y'all didn't did it. I didn't did it before. I do all that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to lose 30 pounds or, or I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop smoking. January the 1st, man, February come around, they back puffing them cigarettes. Like, well, I thought you said you stopped. Man, I couldn't do that, man. I gave about 20 days, man. 20 days. <laughs> Gaslighting yourself again. Gaslighting. Just saying. Dina say, uh, people want to hear what, what you have to say without doing the work to heal from what you said. Ain't that the truth? Well, ain't that the truth? <laughs> Alan B say healing is a process. Definitely. It sure is. It sure is. And that's that's the part of it. See, healing is a process, but nobody want to go through the process. They just want to get to the healing. That's like getting, that's like driving a car in NASCAR and you just want to get to the finish line. Well, you got to go around the track what, two, three hundred times. How many times you got to go around? You can't just, but people just want, they want that, that, that healing expeditiously, like T.I. say. <laughs> they want their healing expeditiously. 
quickly. <laughs> like, that ain't how that happened. I can't help you with that one. Can't help you with that. Donna say, former teacher here, these children are professional gaslighters. Y'all see that? Y'all see what she said? Former teacher here, these children are professional gaslighters. Y'all want me to talk about children. Y'all, when I talked about children last week, talking about uh, narcissists, the children, that was deep. So I, I seen the numbers. They didn't go that high. So I'm like, okay, that ain't one of them studies that people wanted to hear. That's fine. But I know it's true. Somebody go, hey, it might be two, three months from now. Somebody go look up for that video. But like, oh, man, I need, to, I need to watch this because it's true. Spanish girl said, I, I thank everybody for the knowledge of narcissism here on this chat. Y'all bless you. Amen. We thank you for being here. Thank you for coming out here with us. Thank you. Thank everybody for being here. Yeah, see, you always get people around here praying for you. Uh, my sister always, you know, is good at prayer, always praying. And my wife say, Adam B, it's, it's tight, but it's right, brother. I feel you. He does the same with me. It does not feel good, but it must be brought up so he can heal us. Yep, amen to that. Amen. Uh, my sister say, I'm having you locked up. You put raises in the table. <laughs> Here she go, y'all. Here she go. There she go. And my sister, there she go. She say, I have you locked up if you put raisins in potato salad. She ain't say potato tater salad. <laughs> Y'all just started again. See, we can't. Joy, I try to stay on that front row with you, but they, they trying to. Bring, I'm in the middle right now. I'm in the middle. You know, I'm in the middle pews right now, Joe. I'm trying to go back to the front. You know, you hold your finger up. Shannon said that about you. you. Hold your finger up and walk. I'm trying to walk back to the front with, with my sis, but there they go. There they go. I, I tried. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, T.I. in that word. Yeah, expeditiously. He said, oh, what's wrong with this bar? Man, he just coming with these words. From, okay, T.I. <laughs> you ain't never heard him say that, man. He, he says it a lot. I'm like, okay. My wife said, come on, uh, faith-based workplace, tell the truth. That's what we're here to do. We just, just here telling tell the truth. Okay, Adam B. say he's starting a room on Monday or Tuesday for fasting. Yeah, that was a good room. Uh, great information. Hey, that's the first time, but hey. Brother came out with some stuff, so hey, if you're on Clubhouse, check the man out. I really say again, the only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. <laughs> Y'all heard what he said? That's deep. Hey, bro, I used to do that as a post. He say the only time, <laughs> the only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. Y'all get that? Because a lot of people want success without putting in the work. But that man just said the only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. Yeah, I get it. S before W. That's what he's saying. But I, I like that. That's D. You should make a post on that. I like it. <laughs> I like that post. <sighs> you know, I say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, okay, she's thinking head. Okay. Y'all do not trigger my baby. It had a karma with those raisins. I, I, uh, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's uh, probably tell she started there with them raisins tonight. I Bless their heart with them raisins and their tater salad. <laughs> this is where discipline come in. We commit to the lifestyle. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let me scroll down a little bit further. Then we're going to pray. We're going to get up out of here, family. Again, like I say, man, thank y'all all for being here. It's always awesome just seeing y'all here. Always, you know, if you're a new subscriber, hey, man, subscribe to the channel. We're still growing. Hey, we're still growing. So uh, thank, thank y'all for all the uh, subscribers. Thank y'all for all the likes and all the comments on the video. So I, I definitely appreciate that. Can't thank y'all enough for that. So it's always awesome. I seen something, but I don't know where it went. I'm trying to find it. Where is it at? Oh, that's all good. She said I'm late. Hey, sis, you can you can check the replay. Uh, check the replay. But thank you for being here. Hey, hit the like button while you're here, and uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. But yeah, uh. Yeah, you check the replay out whenever you get time. We're about to close out in prayer. Hey, Tyree, hey, how you doing? Just got home and watched the replay. Peace, bro. Oh, I appreciate that, brother. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. It's, it's, hey, you know the time people be doing stuff, so we get it. We get it. Uh, they get upset with our integrity, afraid we will expose their lack of integrity. They definitely, yeah, they definitely do. Want us to be loyal to their deceptions and go along with it. Angry, paranoid, because we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm, did I miss anything? I don't think I did. See, they ain't here clowning. They all in the back row. North Free Living. Uh, Telsha, definitely. Kingdom Mind and Advances. Uh, Heather Carmel trying to be good, but there's something about some raisins, too, so I don't know if she's on the back. She might be in the middle like me. 
I don't know. Jar kind of was in the front, but moved back a few rows a couple of times. So <laughs> but it's always good, man. It's always good to have y'all in here, man. Let's a uh, uh, let me see. It said we're dealing with an evil demon. We're gonna definitely pray for that because uh, they everywhere. Like I said they at work, at home. They yeah, they definitely everywhere. So we definitely gonna be praying for you. I'm gonna pray for you right after this because we know it happens in the workplace and they drive you out of the workplace with all that stuff. So so yeah. Wait, what? She said I didn't do it. I didn't. I didn't even do anything. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't watch the whole thing, but and then look what look what look what, look what your sister said. She said we moving this party up front. Then so see, they're trying to go meet you, John. Trying to go to the front row. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> she said I don't get the raisins and the potato salad for what flavor? I don't know. I seen I seen one potato salad. Not that we talking about. I seen one potato salad. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna go ahead and pray. I seen one potato salad. We had the raisins in there, and they had sprinkled cheese on top. I don't know what that had to do with anything. I and the potato salad. I don't know about y'all, but I know I have seen like the white potato salad. But we down here we have our potato potato salad usually yellow with the mustard and stuff like that. It comes out yellow, but the potato salad was kind of white, and it had cheese on there, and it had raisins in there. I didn't know. I didn't know it was potato salad. I thought it was a uh, uh, what's that stuff called? I thought it was cantaloupe, but look, because it was in chunks. So I thought it was cantaloupe with cheese and raisins. And I was like, well, I wasn't going to eat it anyway, because I didn't think cheese and cantaloupe go together. And I asked somebody, and they was like, not a potato salad. I was like, well, say what? Because it's like some big old chunk, like some square chunks of potato. I ain't never seen potato salad. I was like, what is this, man? So yeah, it was potato salad. It had cheese on there, sprinkled, and uh, it had raisins decorated all in there. And then it had the orange carrots in there, too. I was like, how is this potato? I never seen the orange carrots with the raisins and cheese in potato. I, I say, man, look here. So yeah, yeah. So when you when you're around them people, you might not want to eat some of that stuff. That ain't how potato salad is made. Go look up another recipe. The recipe say your potato your potato salad supposed to come out white with 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 raisins, cheese, and carrots. Yeah, you might not want to eat that one. You might want to stay away from that one. <laughs> yeah. My wife say, uh, stay strong, fam. Don't allow the narcissist to gaslight you. Stand on what you know. Ten toes down. Yeah, amen to that. Say, now nah, that's an assault with a deadly weapon. I don't know what she's talking about. Just say, I was minding my business in the front row. Hey, they coming up there to meet you. So I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I don't know. I'm, they they, they going to meet you, sis. Hey, hey, say family stick together. So they go on the front row with you. I mean, I guess that's good. I guess. You go eat your front, bro. Yeah. Tyree said, I don't have I, I don't have to go through the process I want to do that it's been it's been a rough week, but we all are, are blessed. Yeah, amen to that. Amen to that. Yeah, we all are blessed just to be in here laughing and just having fun or just learning about narcissist abuse and talking about God is you know, it doesn't matter what happened in the week. And you know what I'm saying? It don't happen. What happened in the week or through the day? I had like a rough day today. I ain't gonna lie, I had a rough day, not a rough day, but just had a moment. And like, like I said, Shannon pulled me to the side when I got home. Uh, we prayed in the kitchen. And, you know, she just reassured, like, we're going to be all right. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. So, you know, so I, I know that. And I'm glad I got a praying wife. Well, I'm not just glad. I'm I'm grateful. I'm ecstatic. I'm happy for a praying wife. And it's just it's just awesome to have that because I never had that before. Because usually you come out with any kind of issue. And then it's like, basically, it's just, you know, like, man up or go figure it out. But it's not, you know, it's no prayer. It's no worship with God. It's no, let's figure this out on, together. That's why I love Shannon. It's, it's togetherness. That's something else. It's, you know, before it's gaslighting, it's manipulation and all these other tactics. Now, you know what I'm saying? You got that togetherness where you come together and pray instead of apart doing your own thing. And yeah. So, yeah. All right. Last one, then we go pray. She said, Y'all is teaching me to say no more and strengthening my boundaries and take some work. I will try not to gaslight myself too much. Yeah, just work on that get because we do it. We all do it sometimes by gaslighting ourselves on certain things. Just try not to do it too much, you know, and 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 try to get it almost to we not doing it at all. So yeah. So let's pray, family, so we can get out of here. And uh yeah, let's pray so we can get out of here again. Thank y'all for coming in. Hey, hit the like button. Uh, I think Shannon had just put that up somewhere. I seen it pop up somewhere. Oh, there you go. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, family. You know, just just hit the like button. Support your boy. 
uh, with the likes, it helps with the algorithm. So if you share the video out, like it, comment, you know, after the video is, is, is aired and everything, that all helps with the algorithm. That's what I try to do. I try to go comment on people's videos as much because I know it just helps and it gets more people to see it, like it or whatever, you know. So, yeah, thank you. All right, let's pray, y'all, so we can get up out of here. I don't know why I got heat because, boy, I'm give me some water. I know what Shannon going to say. I should have told her I wanted some water, but I'm good. <laughs> I didn't have none today, but I'm good. All right, let's pray so we can get out of here, family. God, just coming to you just praying, just saying thank you. Thank you for everything that has happened this week, even though some of it might have been bad, but we thank you for all the good. I want to pray for Brother Tyree. I want to pray you for pray for different people that's going with different issues, whether it's Jasmine, Tyree, uh, Dinah, who, whomever, you know, are going are dealing with different things, whether it's at the workplace, at home, whatever. I know, you know, all of us in these different ministries or platforms, we all may be dealing with something, even myself, you know, deal with different things. But we're just thankful for just having you in our presence. We thank you for the family. We thank you for the for the friendship. We thank you for the people that are around us, just able to just share and just just spread awareness, not just on narcissism, but also spread awareness about you, oh Heavenly Father. So we thank you for Telsha. We thank you for joy. We thank you for I thank you for my wife, you know, just being here spreading spreading the message. I thank you for Auntie Karen and 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 Rizzo and Alan B. Just everybody coming together, just spreading the message. And you know, we we spread the message, but we also laugh together because that's what family is all about. It's not just about coming together and just, you know, being tough on one another. But we also got to laugh and get through those times because sometimes laughter is, is better than crying. So we have to realize that as well. So we thank you. Thankful for just giving us this time to just come together just to talk about gaslighting and learn another form of abuse with narcissism. Uh, we thank you for just everybody that just came in, whether they watched this live or came in late or going to watch the replay or, you know, whatever. We pray for those people as well. Just touch them, whatever they're dealing with, whether it's emotional abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, uh, whatever it is, we pray that you just touch them. They're dealing with financial abuse. We pray that you just replace everything that they've lost, then some or heaven for them. They're dealing with, you know, job loss or, you know, car loss or, or whatever the situation is. We just pray that you just replace those things and just reach out to them. Just let them know that they're not in this alone. A lot of times I think we think we in this by ourselves, but we are not. We You are with us 24-7, 365. So we thank you for this. Uh, just this. Thank you for the internet. Just being able to stay, stay up while I was able to just deliver this message tonight. I thank you for everybody just being in here. This we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Shannon's going to be live tomorrow at 1 p.m. So check her out tomorrow at 1 p.m. And then uh, what else? Uh, Joy will be live Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Shannon tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then uh, Tuesday for y'all ladies, uh, y'all didn't sign up for uh, Rock Your Crown. Shannon put the link in there. She has the link for Rock Your Crown. So if you ain't signed up for it, I'm pretty sure I think it's 30 something, 40 something women already signed up. Uh, you got a bunch of guest speakers. I know Telsh is going to be there. Joy is going to be there. Shannon, of course. Uh, I don't know who else is te uh, speaking. I know that uh, I think Lori, uh, the actress, she's, she's speaking. So sign up for Rock Your Crown. That's going to be this Tuesday, actually, on the 28th. So sign up for Rock Your Crown. Uh, Shannon, she's going to put the link in there. Three event brights. So sign, you know, do your sign up. And, you know, if you got a crown, where, you know, you can get it on Amazon. You can still order it. If not, hey, just come as you are, you know, and go to the event. I think this this message is about, uh, like, entrepreneurship and, and just business after narcissist abuse. So that's going to be a great message for women. Like I said, I don't remember all the speakers, but I know Shannon, Joy, and Telsha for sure is speaking. Uh, so that's going to be an awesome thing to have all of them come together. And that's on Zoom. So uh, as soon as you drop a link in there, you'll see it. But, yeah, sign up for that. Uh, and, you know, Telsha is live every Thursday, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, okay, Shannon, I see you just put it in. So this is, the, this is the thing right here. It's in the chat for Eventbrite. So, ladies, hey, go to that. Uh, yeah, Diana, Butu, sign up for that. That's a good thing to be part of. They all going to be speaking. I think, Shannon, you got, what, six speakers together? I think it's six, maybe seven speakers. And they all talking about, you know, uh, business, uh, like a business mindset after narcissist abuse. I think that's something everybody can learn from. But it's just for the ladies. So uh, sign up for that uh, as well. Like I say, Telstra is live on Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, 7 p.m. Central, and 8 p.m. Eastern. So sign up for that. So, again, thank you all for just, you know, being here. 
Uh, thank you. I just see that. Thank you, sis. Uh, Tell us you're always sowing seeds, man. Thank you. Thank you. May God return that back to you just over and over again. Thank you for that. God bless you. God bless you. What What's the six for? Oh, okay. Six speakers. So she had six speakers for uh, that Rock Your Crown Tuesday. And you can ask anybody that's been to Rock Your Crown. I know Auntie Karen has been. I think Joy has been before. You can ask anybody. If you've been to Rock Your Crown before, the, the ladies, they can tell you it's a great event. It's a great way, you know, for the women to come together. And like I told you, I'm about to do something with the men. So we're going to have that coming out as well. So we can get something for the men where we can speak and come together and, and talk as well. Hey, stay woke. Hey, hey, bro. It's, we just wrapping up. I just prayed. But hey, you can watch the replay, bro. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Uh, but yeah, we about to close up. But yeah, check out the replay, bro. There's a lot, a lot of different information, you know, told on this one. So, but thank you again, uh, uh, Telsha for sowing that seed. God bless you. God bless you, sis. So let's uh, and that's that's I think that's it. Rocky Crown. Oh, and Auntie Karen uh also has a room Thursday on Clubhouse, and she has a YouTube channel. So YouTube channels is uh Cluster B Free Karen, it's uh Shannon Knock Free Living, it's Pink Girl Teaches. And it's also Telsha with the T on MPD and relationships. And then, of course, my channel. And, you know, we just stick together and, you know, family. That's family. That's well, you know, I got my wife and then I got my sister. So, and we got auntie. So, we got auntie. We got, I got two sisters. You know what I'm saying? And my brother Rizzo as well, uh, Rizzo Protector Group. He also has a channel. He, hey, y'all, he just reached, and he all, I know he don't like to say anything, but he just reached 50 subscribers. So, my brother is growing. So, we're trying to get him to 100. So, and he talks about CSI. You know, things like that, anything crime and stuff like that. So go support his channel. Uh, he got good content over there as well. And he has a podcast as well. So you can listen to it on Alexa, on Podbean, on Spotify, on I don't know what's the other stuff. Whatever whatever you listen to on your, your podcast, you can look, find them on there as well. It's called Light Em Up Podcast with Phil Rizzo. So check them out. All right, family. That's the uh, thing for tonight. I love y'all. I'll see y'all. Well, I'll see you tomorrow at Shannon thing, but I'll see y'all. Again, Wednesday, I might not be live. I'm going to see. I might just drop a video. Uh, Wednesday will be a, a premiere, and then I might be live Friday. But I'll see. I'll see what God has for me. But, again, thank you all for coming out. Uh, Auntie Karen, did you put the uh, – I think you put it in the, the 1-800 numbers in there. Okay, I see it. I see it. Never mind. I see it. Okay, so we always want to put that in there. The mix of violence, if you're dealing with it, 1-800 number right there. Write it down. Keep it. Save it in your phone, you know, if you need it. Hope, pray to God you don't need it. And then also uh, suicide prevention. 1-800, uh, no, that's the number right there, so save that number as well. All right. All right, man. Again, thank y'all. I'll see y'all next time. God bless you all, and it's been real. All right, I'll see y'all. Uh-huh. Yo. Yeah, yeah.